Thalathuna ayah fil Quran, 30 verses of one particular surah that is in the Quran that continues to beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives and that is nothing but surah mulk. So surah mulk is one of the most important surahs in the Quran, ya khuti. One of the most important surahs in the Quran because of the fact that the surah focuses on uh, seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through one important means and that is to demonstrate the power and the might and the magnificence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you want to see a surah that creates that impression of fear, total absolute fear in the heart of a, of a slave of God who believes in Allah in the last day, then this is the surah because it creates that awe, that inspiring awe of the massive magnitude of the power of the might of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is why Allah starts with the surah by talking about Tabarakalladi bi adihil mulk. Glory be to the king, the one who has the dominion of the heavens and the earth and all the power in his hands and ends by talking about the most basic thing that we need in order to survive, which is water. And that's why Allah says, do you see all human beings, if you don't listen to what I've just said in this surah, that if the water that is with you, the water with which you drink and that you are thirsty, but with, without which you will die within a day or two, right? This water, if someone was to prevent the water from you, who is there other than Allah who can send the water back? And we know that every single thing depends on water. Whether you think everything surrounds the economy, guess what? The economy surrounds agriculture, guess what? Agriculture depends on water. If you think the economy is there, then the economy depends on cattle. Cattle depends on water. Everything depends on water. Our life, our living depends on water. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala demonstrates His magnificent power through this surah in Surah Mulk. This surah, Ya Khuti, was revealed for the most arrogant of sinners. We know we have sinners and all people are sinners. I am a sinner, you are a sinner, everyone's a sinner. But the best of sinners are the ones who repent. And Jannah and Jahannam were created both for sinners. Jahannam was not created just for those who sin. Also Jannah was created for those who sin. But Jannah was created for those who sin and then repent. But Jahannam was created for those who sin but don't repent. So Yekhwati, this surah was revealed for those people who are the most arrogant sinners. The most arrogant, haughty, proud sinners, those who think that, you know, I am the greatest and, and there's no one greater than me. And who is that that can take me to account? And I will never die. And no, I am, I'm the one who has the most money and the wealth. Who is there greater in wealth and money and women and children than me? So this surah is for the most arrogant of the most arrogant of people. It is for this reason why Ikhwati, this surah uh, deals with the topic of Tawbah from a very different way. Without telling you to repent, Allah causes you to repent. Without telling you to repent, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes you repent. Why? Because you are filled with an understanding of the magnitude of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let's learn about this surah, the surah that was revealed in Makkah by the ijma of the scholars of tafsir. This surah was revealed in Makkah. So it is a Makkiyya. And the surahs of Makkah origin are the surahs that deal a lot with the Day of Judgment, a lot with Jahannam, a lot with Jannah. And by Allah, it, it, it deals a lot with the reality that we are all facing. Yaqwati, some of you, as we take the 11 surahs in, uh, inshallah, in Juz Tabarak, may be surprised why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about Jahannam a lot. Does it not sound demotivating? Allah is always talking about the negative aspect. No, the reality is Allah is not talking about Jahannam so you feel negative. Allah is talking about Jahannam now so that you feel positive that Allah is warning you. That there is something very severe and very serious that you are not paying attention to. Just like the Prophet ﷺ said, if you knew what I know, you would not find pleasure in sleeping with your wives. He said another authentic hadith, if you knew what I know, you would not bury your dead. He said another authentic hadith, if you knew what I would know, you would cry more and you would laugh less. If you knew what I know. Right? If you knew what I know. So, Ikhwati, this is the reality that we must connect with today, which is the reality of Akhira in Surah Mulk. Let's continue inshallah. Surah Mulk is divided into, uh, into a number of parts. The first part of Surah Mulk talks about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His greatness and His blessing and about the sky and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the sky in this amazing glory and this amazing greatness. He talks about the sky as an example to show you the perfectness of the creation of Allah Azza And if a creation which is the sky, is so perfect, imagine how perfect Allah is. And that is why we say as-salam. Allahumma anta salam Oh Allah, you are the salam. What does salam mean? Salam means peace. But salam, the name of Allah, does not mean peace. 
Salam, the name of Allah means perfectness. Perfectness. He is the perfect God. As Salam. Why is he as Salam? Because he is perfect in every way. Perfect in his names, perfect in his attributes, perfect in every single way. His words are perfect, his actions are perfect, and that is why there's no blemish in anything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does. It, the blemish is only in our minds, only in our inability to understand and comprehend. And that is why Allah is as Salam. So Allah gives one example of the perfectness of Allah Azawajal, and that is to talk about the, the skies and look at the excellence of the skies, how perfect is it. So therefore, you will know how great Allah is. Then the Quran, in the second part, of the first page, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala moves into talking about as people are being thrown into Jahannam, there is a conversation that will take place between them and the Khazanati Jahannam and the 19 angels that look after Jahannam. And there's also a man that has been created and his name is Suhq. And this man will also speak to the people of Jahannam. We're going to come to that very soon. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about this conversation that will take place between the Khazanati Jahannam, who are the angels that are guarding Jahannam, and the people that are being thrown into Jahannam. And he talks about this. And he describes it in such an amazing descriptive way that you actually feel you're really there listening in as if you are the close th third person just listening to the discussion between the two so that you know. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala moves on in the second page of this surah and talks about whether you believe in this or not. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take you to account. Then he talks about the greatness of the signs of Allah, talking about how many things Allah has done for you, the earth and how Allah has outstretched it, the water that he has given to drink, he, how he has made everything easy for us, uh, the valleys that he has created for us in between the beautiful mountains that are stakes on the ground. Allah talks about this. Allah talks about the birds and how the birds fly in the sky. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about how we live in this dunya. Imagine how we live in this dunya despite Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's ability to give us an earthquake or a huge uh, frightening uh, uh, lightning thunder uh, that will come down from the sky and, and destroy us just like Allah destroyed the army of the field. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala scares his ibad and he scares his slaves by saying, do you have a guarantee Allah will not cause an earthquake right now? Do you have a guarantee Allah will not cause the earth to tremble right under you right now? Do you have a guarantee you will not die right now when you leave outside? You have no guarantees. Do they have a guarantee Allah is not mocking them? No one has a guarantee of the mockery of Allah except for those who disbelieve. So Ikhwati, we have no guarantee at all. In one authentic narration, it was reported that one of the Salaf of Salih, he said, I met all of the 10 of the Sahaba that were promised Jannah, the 10 Ashar Mubashireen. And he said, every single one of the 10 Ashar Mubashireen, every one of them was afraid that they were a hypocrite. Every one of them was afraid that they were a hypocrite. Meaning every single one of them was afraid that whatever good was happening around them, it was a mockery of Allah. Just before they died, they might enter Jahannam. So they were all afraid. And so they led their life in fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Ya Khuti, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala carries on and he talks about if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not help you, who will provide for you? Allah is the one who provides for the birds. So who will provide for you? Which army will provide for you? Which God will provide for you? How will you ever save yourselves? And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about in the second part of the surah. The last part of the surah, which is the third page and the half of the third page, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about when you see Jahannam on that day, and when the Jahannam is drawn, drawn, drawn close to them, Zulfa meaning drawn close to them. See at wujuhul ladina kafar. You will see the faces of those who are who are disbelieved in Allah Azawajal, very, very downtrodden and sad and unhappy on that day. And it will be said to them, This is what you used to ask for. Meaning you ask for the Jahannam, this Jahannam is this is the Jahannam you ask for. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala finishes off the surah by saying, O oh people, if I can punish Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and his family by giving him difficulty in this dunya, what will prevent you from getting, having difficulty in this dunya and the akhirah? If Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa who is so close to Allah, yet Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa had difficulty in his life, did he not? All his male children passed away, his, many of his daughters passed away before him, his Sahaba died before him, his beloved wife died before him, his uncle died before him. He was hit in battle. He had no food to eat for two months in a row sometimes. He used to put stones on his stomach. Yet if Allah can put his most beloved 
into the most difficult situations, what is the guarantee that you have that Allah will not punish you? So repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before your final end comes. And that is why, that is why it was reported in a narration uh, in the books of tafsir that uh, shaitan came to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he said, Oh Allah, I will never ever cease to misguide your slaves until I enter every single one of them into Jahannam. So Allah replied to him and said, And I will never ever cease to forgive them from all their sins as long as they seek forgiveness. Are you tired of all these annoying ads on YouTube? Are you worried that a haram video might pop up? Well, the One Islam TV app is here to solve these problems, inshallah. The One Islam TV app is 100% free of any ads and is safe to browse for your peace of mind. Watch or listen to lectures and lessons while you work, rest or drive with your device switched off. Watch videos on demand or download videos and watch offline. Watch hundreds of high quality produced Islamic reminders, Quran learning videos, stories of the prophets and so much more. Two to four new videos uploaded daily, inshallah. One Islam TV is 100% run and owned by Muslims, which means a small amount you pay for your subscription is a sadaqa jariya, continuous charity for you as we use the funds raised to continue producing more beneficial videos and reminders. Inshallah. The One Islam TV app is now available on Apple devices, Apple TV, Android devices, Android TV, Amazon Fire TV, and Roku. So you can watch on most devices and smart TVs. Download now for a free 7-day trial. May Allah reward you for supporting our work.